and gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I acknowledge the presence of Sayyid Abu Rahana and Sayyid Jafar Misri. We are privileged to have the wife of Ahmed Said Nani, the ambassador of the Islamic Republic of Iran, to Australia. We welcome our friendly counselors, Sister Sabrine Farabi and Muhammad Hussain. We welcome the representatives of various sister community organizations, Sayyid Zafar from the Pakistani media and delegates to the Church of Scientology and immense support of expansion technology. Now, I request Sister Bushra Abdi to express her views about Sayyid Zafar. With the last salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Today I stand before you to reflect on the timeless teachings of Islam, but more specifically to draw inspiration from a remarkable figure in Islamic history, Lady Fatima Zahra, peace be upon you, in honor of this beautiful occasion. Congratulations to you all on the birth anniversary of Sayyid Zahra. As we delve into the life of this exemplary woman, we find a source of empowerment that resonates profoundly within us. Lady Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, was not merely a historical figure, but a paragon of strength, wisdom, and compassion. Her life exemplified the essence of empowerment, serving as a guiding light for women and youth, transcending timely boundaries. When writing this speech, I thought to myself, well, which traits of Lady Fatima Zahra stood out the most to me, especially in the world of today? And after having a very difficult time choosing between the countless admirable traits of Lady Fatima, I decided I would talk about two. Number one, her selflessness. And number two, her unwavering commitment to pursue social justice. So the Lord. It is as Ayatollah Khomeini once said, the position of Fatima Zahra is one of those positions that are either impossible or difficult for ordinary people like you and I to imagine. She is the greatest lady in human history, and we can understand this from the way our prophet and imams treated her. Fatima was known for the way she treated her father with utmost care, respect, and love. Their bond was so profound that he affectionately named her Ummah Abiha, the mother of her own father. The Prophet once said, Fatima is a part of me. I am not pleased unless Fatima is pleased. Whatever upsets her upsets me, and whatever harms her harms me. This shows to us the value of Lady Fatima in the eyes of the Prophet. It shows to us that in order for the Prophet to be pleased with us, Lady Fatima needs to please be with us first, and hence we should use her as our role model. Whether it was her devotion as a caring daughter, wife and mother, or her simplicity in fulfilling day-to-day -day tasks, or her piety, or her unbelievable faith in Allah, I hope we can all follow in her footsteps, because ultimately she is one of the women of paradise. Then Allah. in themselves, only doing things when it has a motive for them, only hearing out people when it is convenient for them. A surge in self-centered pursuits has given rise to a culture that at times seems fixated on individual needs, financial gains, personal gains, just any sort of gains. And you see, this has wired us to completely forget about anyone other than, well surprise, ourselves. Throughout the life of Fatima, she will put the needs of others before herself. Allah says in verses 8 and 9 of Surah Insan, وَيُطْمِعُونَ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ قُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And despite their love for it, they give the food to the needy, the orphan and the captive. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُهُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُبِيسُ مِنْهُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شَكُورًا We feed you only for the sake of Allah. We do not want any reward nor any thanks. The 
pointed verse was revealed when Baby Fatima and Imam Ali alayhi salam had fasted for three days after Allah had healed Imam Hassan as the same, their son, from an illness. On each night, someone in need would come to their door asking for food, and each night they would give away all that they had, leaving themselves hungry. This is called selflessness, giving to others even when you don't have enough for yourself. On another occasion, Baby Fatima donated her wedding dress to a woman in need. It is said that she quoted this verse of the Quran when asked why. You will never attain piety till you spend from that which you love. Imam Hassan narrates that he would leave his mother late at night, praying for all the believing men and women without praying for herself. Upon asking her why, Fatima said, Oh my son, the neighbor first and then the house. This is a crucial lesson for all of us living in the modern world. In an age where self-centered pursuits often dominate, Baby Fatima's selflessness stands as a poignant reminder that when one's heart is attuned to the needs of others, it is beautiful. Care for your family, your friends, your neighbors, your community, those who are less fortunate than you, because ultimately this is what Baby Fatima teaches us, even when there is no benefit for you. Salawat. Baby Fatima was a beacon of courage, pursued resolutely against injustice with unwavering determination. Her strength wasn't just in words, but in actions that echoed a deep sense of justice. In a historic speech known as the Sermon of Fadr, Baby Fatima spoke out publicly when she was denied the right to an inheritance following the death of the Prophet. The inheritance was a piece of land in a village known as Fadr and was gifted to Lady Fatima by her father during his lifetime. She said in this sermon, O oh, people of understanding, supporters of faith and defenders of Islam, what is the cause of this negligence in defending my rights before the injustice being done to me? For her decision to speak out was not just for the land. Lady Fatima did not fight for the wealth or the material gains of this land. Rather, this legal battle reflected a bigger purpose. It was about the principle. It was about justice. Her powerful words in the Sermon of Fadr set the stage for the world to speak up and battle against injustice. Oftentimes, whether it is due to culture or simply due to fear of social repercussions, we shy away from speaking out, even if we know we have been wronged. Lady Fatima next salam showed us that when an injustice has been done against you or any injustice you witness, it is important to stand up for what is right. Unfortunately, we are living in a world with injustice, feeling it is right now. As we sit here under a protected roof, with clean clothes to wear, a house to return to, food to eat and clean water to drink, we must reflect on how lucky we are to have these blessings. And whilst we may think of these as basic blessings, our Palestinian brothers and sisters are fighting for their lives every single day with no access to these same necessities of life. Their lives have been destroyed by oppressors who continue to rampage with injustice. Bibi Fatima became an emblem of resistance against injustice. Her legacy inspires us to emulate her bold stance, reminding us that even in the face of adversity, standing up for what is right can create ripples of positive change. It is our duty as the followers of Bibi Fatima to do anything we can, whether that's educating ourselves, speaking up for what is right, or simply staying non ignorant to our surroundings. With a loud salawat, let's pray that inshallah, justice is restored and Palestine in all other suffering countries. Salawat. I would like to end my speech with a short poem. Allah created the foundations of heaven. With it, He gave a gift to His creation. An angel wrapped in the scent of the Lord's wisdom, this gift was called Fatima, leader of women. A woman so pious, so humble, so pure, she was titled Sayyidah bin Nisa al Arameen, the master of all the ladies in all the world. So much hardship and struggles she had to endure, yet with her unwavering faith in Allah, she became the embodiment of courage for the entire world. Salawat, thank you so much. Thanks for sure for the introduction of Sayyidah Zahra. 
I now invite Brother Jawad Imam to speak on the topic of Khamtun and Jannah with the latter salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salam. Firstly, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you as we have gathered here today to celebrate the birth of Lady Fatima to Sahra Salawatullah alayha. Undoubtedly, Lady Fatima plays a pivotal role not just in Islamic history, but she also influences our day to day life. Now, I'm not here to reiterate things that you already know, nor am I here to tell you things that you know better than I do. Rather, today, I'm here to just share a few thoughts and some reflection, things that I've pondered upon as to what sort of things did I personally learn from Lady Fatima to Zahra Salaam and how does she influence my way of thinking, my perception, and my day-to-day -day life. Now, I like to go about this in three categories. Category number one, I like to see or talk about the lessons that we learn from Lady Fatima and that we can apply at a community level. Category number two, are lessons that we can apply at a family level. And category number three, are things or lessons that I learn as an individual. Starting with category one, at a community level, like Russia previously talked about. We all know how Lady Fatima stood up against the oppressors of her time, how she spoke up, how she spoke for justice. And that is the thing that we need to take and implement in today's life, which is to get our word out there, get our narrative out there. Now, this will be met with resistance. Lady Fatima encountered a lot of oppression, a lot of abuse, when she spoke for the truth. Abuse in all forms of forms, be it that physical abuse, be it emotional abuse, be it political abuse. Despite that, she continued to speak up to the point that even today, we have certain narratives and proof of people, certain people she was upset with in certain literatures. That shows the importance of getting the word out there. If we were to apply that to today's time, Let's take the Israel-Palestinian conflict, for example. There are so many people that I know personally that are either sitting on the fence or are not well informed on such topics. Now, before we raise our reports and get our narrative out there, it is important to educate ourselves on the topic. And then once, only once we've educated ourselves is to talk to others, educate others, raise awareness and get your voice out there. This can be done in all, all sorts of forms. Be it creating media content. If you don't have the facilities or the time for that, then promote other people that are creating content, shedding light on the reality of the situation, shedding light on the truth. It is not simply enough for us to stand as bystanders and go, the mainstream media, they're propagating our propaganda, they've got bias, they're spreading misinformation. We need to tackle those by creating our own content or promoting content that reveals the truth. I'd like to share a quote with you all that beautifully summarizes this. And that, and that is, until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. I'll repeat this quote again. Until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. And this quote beautifully summarizes the need for us to get out there, put our voices out there, so we can change the narrative. Coming to category um, two, which is family level. We all know the pivotal role that Lady Fatima played in her family. For example, she was given the title Umm Abiha, the mother of her father, based on the way she took care of the Prophet, looked after him, treated him when he was abused and assaulted for spreading the message of Islam. Look at how much significance she held in the eyes of Imam Ali from the way he expressed grief after she passed away. Look at the influence she had when it came to raising two and many more magnificent characters like Imam Hassan and Imam Hassan 
But what lessons can you take away from that? And one of the things that we can take away is for us to analyze our behavior at home with our family members, which is extremely, extremely important. The reason why I say that is because the moment we leave our house, we go to some public place, be that our work, our university, school, community center, or even a masjid, we put on a false persona, we have a beautiful smile on our face, we greet everyone, Asalaamu Alaikum, we give them a little bow, sign of respect. But the moment we go home, all of that is gone. That smile is gone, that love is gone, that compassion, the tolerance, the kindness towards family members, it disappears. And I do understand, it's not easy, it does get frustrating, where you're living with people you're completely comfortable with, um, they're constantly in your face, it does get hard, trust me, I'm just very hard to take good at heart, I have a younger brother at home. Despite all of this, it's very important, as Rasul Wan has said, the best of you are those that are best to your families. So I ask you all to just go ponder, is your behavior at home the same as your behavior outside? And the reality is the true you is the one that is at home. So think about how you treat your parents, how you treat your children, your spouses, your siblings, and so on. Coming over to category three, when I was thinking about what do I know personally from Lady Martha or how does she change my um, way of thinking or perception or if there was anything that I've learned from her? One of the things I like to talk about that Busha also covered beautifully is selflessness. And we learn that from how Lady Fatima taught Imam Hassan to pray for believers before praying for yourself. Or when it's a hajjah, Lady Fatima will pray for others before praying for herself. Now that is truly beautiful. If you imagine during the hajjah, in the darkness of the night, when people are asleep, um, if there's peace or quiet outside, depending on the sun that you live in, in an intimate moment between just you and your Creator, before asking for your needs, you have, you have given thought to the needs of others. The reason why I say this is because when I used to make dua, it always used to be, Oh Allah, I want this, I want that, give me this, give me that, make this happen, make that happen. But after learning from Lady Fatima, what I do is, and what we all can do is take a step back, pray for the Imam of our time first, and then pray for others. It could be anyone, your family members, your friends, people around the world, even those who don't get along with you really well. That shows true beauty of character when you pray for somebody that you don't want. And by doing that, what will happen is, it will open up your mind to the needs and the wants of others. Now, this is not to undermine your desires, your needs, your sufferings, your trials and tribulations, but rather it gets you to think about others. And what the, the benefit of that that I have found is it translates into your day-to-day -day life. It alters how you interact with others and how you behave with others. Just to give you an example, if you go about your day-to-day -day life and you see someone in distress, you would, you would have the urge to do something about it, be that put a smile on their face, solve their problem. If you can't do it, refer them to someone who can solve their problem. Or at least be there, be someone that they can vent to. And this all begins by praying for them in isolation, only between you and your Lord. No one else knows. At a moment where you can ask things for yourself, if you pause and pray for others before yourself, that will translate into your day-to-day -day life. So just to quickly reiterate, at the community level, it's very important to be active. Get your voice out there, get your narratives out there. And there are many forms of doing that. At a family level, analyze your behavior at home and compare it to your behavior outdoors. And at an individual level, pray for others before you pray for yourself. Thank you so much for your valuable time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Brother Jawad, for your insightful address and sharing your personal experiences. I would now like to invite Fatima Dirani and Sama Dirani to recite Anishi.
السلام عليكم زهراء هي بنت من هي زوج من هي أم من من لا يداني في الفخار أباها من لا يداني في الفخار أباها وكعبة الأعمال في الدنيا وفي أخراها يا وكيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله يا بكيهة عند الله اشفعي لنا عند الله صلوات
Salawat. Program 
activities and meetings. Please insert the registration desk and provide your details to contact which we will be on the website. I assure you on behalf of the management committee that your provided details will be kept confidential. Lastly, the Youth Empowerment Committee has been approached to arrange the new speech contest in the public. Decision will be made under consultation with the management committee of the Finally, I believe that the youth of our future leaders, you are an invaluable part of the community. You must be encouraged. You can see today's program is mostly led by you. Let us resolve our issues to enhance this practice further. Help us align my Sunni. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Salawat. Thanks, Sister Rawasi, for the empowerment from the empowerment to you. I would like now to invite Australian Aboriginal Citizens Up to Sister Cheryl Ball to present her research for us today. <laughs> Thank you. 
pass upon you or me. And for those of you who are amongst us who have endured such loss, my condolences are with you. I say to you, should we be burdened to endure such events, not one of us would be capable of discussing daily matters. Not one of us would be concerned with our phones, sending text messages, or surfing the internet. Rather, all of our being would be concentrating on praying for the soul of our child, being lost in our mourning, seeking closeness to our love. It is the same degree of tradition, if not more, that we need to succumb to during our mourning for our beloved ones who stand, who stand, and who stand, and who stand. For only then would we even begin to believe we are worthy of utterance and intercession. Sisters, be mindful and spread amongst other sisters who cannot be in this message. If you believe to have value in your hands and your day, let us, as she are believing with women, set an example to our children, to our non shia sisters and non believers, in the truthfulness of our tears in recognition of the events of Kabbalah. In hope that it is one step closer to saving our souls and that we may be accepted amongst those who enter Jannah. When you enter the magic this year to commemorate Ashura in congregation, leave behind your daily activities, banter, and your desire to share conversations or comments with your sisters. Respect the sisters sitting beside you by remaining silent throughout the delivery of the sermon. Turn off your mobile phone or at the very least turn into silence and resist the temptation to share text messages and or connect to the internet to surf the web. For surely these are the first steps to ensuring your heart remains true, true to the gravity of Fatima's life and legacy, legacy and that of her father, his blessings upon him and his family. Her husband's are leading our first demand and her children. Remind yourself of just how perfect you are and pray for forgiveness not only for yourself, but for all of them. For only those two who were the of Fatima's reward in recognition of your love of the children. Thank you for allowing me to share my own understanding of being Fatima with you. I was blessed with the opportunity to address you today. I refer to it as a blessing because it forced me to spend countless hours researching the best woman amongst us. And in so doing, I enhanced my own admiration and love for Islam. I encourage you all to do the same. Many of our sisters around the world don't have the same access to education as us, and so I urge you all not to waste the opportunity you have of seeking knowledge, for it will surely bring us closer to our maker. Thank you.
this award goes to Sister Sabha Jirani who worked very hard to make this achieve happen. Thank you very much, Sister. Thank you very much.
um, some of the my teachers to being in here and we love that we have their presence. And also we honor the presence of uh, all aspects of the community really we have here. I think every part of the community that I know they have uh, attended from different centers and um, they left this sort of title at the end to wrap up the uh, lectures and also some sort of conclusion and inshallah and go up. I think um, the presentations here, it wasn't about um, giving anybody any knowledge as such. Um, also, people are very well informed about Fatima Zahar, so I'm not on enough. However, they were very informative at the same time. But rather, it was um, a kind of um, a view of, of certain people who have been in this journey of, of knowing Prophet as we all believe that she is the key to connecting um, both um, in, inside the religion, like in Islam, the intersect, and both uh, and also outside between the Muslims and non-Muslims. The key is Prophet Muhammad in the time that um, certain topics are very popular, like feminism, and many people claim to have done it all. You know, they have uh, been very sort of active in, in the field of feminism and showing who is a complete woman. In this day and age, all of the um, media and every, everything that is happening around us with uh, showing a picture of an uh, oppressive religion uh, when it comes to uh, about, uh, you know, the women's rights, we see Muhammad at the same time that she is the best in um, chastity and being you know, the best with hayat and, and hijab and covering herself and the best in the, the field of looking after her husband and being a, a nurse at some point after the, the um, wounded in, in the, in, during the war. Um, at the same time, uh, she is the best mother and she is a social activist. She is somebody that in the, in the time that you can see that there is hardly uh, any place for a woman to speak up, to stand up in front of other men. The men who were often very oppressive towards women and many of them are known for beating women before Islam. And in and after Islam, if they manage to um, get the opportunity, they beat so. At that time, she was not scared to go in front of her family and be a public speaker and um, send the message of the fact that even being a woman in that situation doesn't mean that you're going to keep quiet, it is needed to, to be anything to be said. In that situation, she never lost even the smallest degree of, of her uh, values as a woman. Unfortunately, sometimes people try to confuse the um, role of a woman with not having a job. They say, oh, you're what? Going to the community, representing your community, being somebody with full hijab in the, at the university, for example, or in any sort of um, political, social uh, uh, presentation is very difficult. And perhaps you shouldn't do it because if they would, people point at you, they pick on you, they bully you. But she is the one that did all of that in that time that things were much, much harder than that. The time that people did not even have the opportunity to uh, say anything, even if they were men, that's the only they were women. And Alhamdulillah, um, I can see that people uh, uh, recognize that very well. And Alhamdulillah, that we are here today to commemorate um, her birth and her excellent um, work uh, during the time uh, of. of uh, after the death and demise of the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially, and Alhamdulillah, that we have keeping those values 
and very dear to us. With that, I would ask everybody to uh, stand up and then we'll recite the Dua al Faraj. And inshallah, we let you go because you can see it's very hot.